Good morning, everyone. I'm Xiao Hu from Huawei. Uh, here I will talk about um, virtual subnet, a kind of uh, IP only L2 VPN service. This can be used for DCI, data center interconnect. Here I list some major requirement for DCI. Um, the first is VLAN scalability. For example, how to scale the VPN instance beyond the four key limits. The second is the MAC table scalability. Um, most uh, layer three VPN solutions are using the MAC and, and the mapping, map and uh, in cap scheme. So the core router, uh, the core router or the P routers for running table is now side to the number of the P or P router, routers number. So um, there's no problem for the core routers. But uh, if we just extend the layer two domain across multiple data centers, the C switches, especially the commodity C switches, will need to learn more MAC addresses not only the local MAC address, but also the remote MAC addresses. So it will become a um, big challenge. The third is broadcast storm reduction. For example, um, how to reduce the ARP broadcast impact on the network performance and uh, the host performance, and how to avoid the on a unit cost flooding. The third is the multi homing and the load balancing, so as to increase um, high ability capacity and uh, to op optimize the bandwidth utilization, especially the broadband, uh, uh, backbone bandwidth utilization. What you subnet is a very simple idea. By using the proven layer 3 VPN and the ARP proxy technology, it can provide a, a layer, uh, IP only layer 2 VPN service. Compared to the existing layer 2 VPN solution, the virtual subnet has the following benefits. The first is suppressing the unknown unit cost and ARP broadcast flooding. Since um, VS can restrict the reach of the flooding domain within a single site. The second is reducing the MAC table address of C switches. The third is achieving multi-homing and a lot of balancing by using the VRP. This is an example of an intro subnet unit cost. On each P router, its local C host ARP entries will be learned automatically and uh, host routes for their local C hosts will be automatically generated according to the, their ARP entries. And then these host routes will be distributed across the backbone with the existing layer sweeping signaling. If host A want to send a packet host B, it will first send an ARP request for B. P1 at ARP proxy, when receiving this packet, will return its own MAC address to host A. Then host A will send a packet for host B with, Macing, with destiny MAC address of, of PE's MAC address. PE receiving this packet will tunnel it towards the next hope PE router, P2. Then P2 will forward its packet towards the destination host. We can see here the forwarding behavior on the P routers is not exchanged compared to the current layer 3 VPN forwarding presence. The difference is we use host route based forwarding. 
this example of uh, inter subnet unit cost. Here, a gateway is connected to P2. Now, host A wants to access um, a host B, which is located in a different sub subnet. A will send a packet to P1 with destiny MAC address with PE. PE is MAC address. And PE was, oh, oh here, sorry. Um, P, P2 is connect to the C gateway router, so it will be configured with a default route. Then this default route will be distributed to other P routers. Now host A send a packet for host B. P1, upon receiving the packet, will tunnel its packet to P2 according to the default route. P2 then set its packet according to the configured state route to the gateway. Here, uh, if two CE routers, for example, are connected to two P routers, respectively, for gateway redundancy purpose, only the P router which can connect to the uh, YRP master will be allowed to advertise a default route. We can achieve this goal very, with a very simple way. For example, let's hope the default route is sent to, set at the virtual router IP, and that default route will not be deemed as valuable until there is a host route for the next hope address. That's the next hope of validity check trick. Uh, trick. Local C hosts are automatically discovered by P routers through ARP learning mechanism. To keep those learn, learned ARP entries from timing out, P routers should send a unicast ARP request to those known C hosts. To ensure the P router could learn all its local C hosts in a short time, especially after rebooting off due to some reason, the P router should perform at least once a host scanning. For example, the P router could send an ARP uh, ISMP echo request to an IP broadcast address. Every C host receiving that request will respond with its uh, ARP reply containing its IP to MAC mapping. In this way, the IP to mapping MAC, uh, mappings can be learned by P routers. By using ARP proxy on P routers, ARP broadcast uh, contained within a single site. For example, if our ARP request for a local C host received, the P router just discard it. For a I, ARP request for a remote C host, the P router should return its own MAC address. For a ARP request for unknown C, C host, that is, there are no matching host route for that uh, destination host, the PE should discard this packet. In the C multi-homing scenario, where P is enabled among the P routers which are connected to a um, multi-home site, and only the WRP master is allowed to act as an uh, ARP proxy. In this way, uh, active, active multi-homing for the incoming traffic can be achieved. Since all P routers attend to a given multi-home site can advertise the host route for, the, for their local C host. When a C 
house, for example, a VM, moves from one repeating site to another, the P router attend to the new repeating site will advertise the uh, host route for that uh, C host when receiving a um, greater ARP message from that C host. And the P router attend to the previous repeating site upon receiving the above host route announcement will send an ARP request for that C host to check whether that C host is still connected to it. If not, the P router will discard the corresponding ARP entry and withdraw the host route for that C host which had been advertised before. Otherwise, it was just a um, C mode homing case. For um, customer multicast and broadcast traffic, MVPN technology, including the egress application mechanism, can be used without any change. Here, the customer broadcast traffic will be processed as a special customer multicast traffic. This is a brief comparison between VPS and the virtual subnet as a DSI solution. Uh, VPS cannot reduce only unicast flooding across multiple data centers, but which subnet can achieve that goal? VPS uh, do nothing about uh, ARP broadcast reduction, and the VS can reduce the ARP flooding by using the ARP proxy technology. Uh, since um, the flood, the layer two domain is just extended across multiple sites in the VPS solution. The C switches need to learn not only the MAC address for local C host, but also the MAC address for remote C host. In the VS solution, C switches only need to learn local MAC addresses. VPS ca cannot support active ad multi homing, but VS can. Um, in case of a C failover, um, the triggered MAC withdrawal in the VPS solution will cause on a unicast flooding in a short period, while in the virtual subnet solution, traffic flood will not happen. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Comments or questions?